Hey, did you know that in the history of pickleball, four times our sport almost ended? Stay tuned. My guest today really does not need an introduction. She is a 17 time national champion and a member of the Pickleball Hall of Fame. I have the wonderful Miss Jennifer Lucor with me today. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Hello, Miss CJ. I'm doing great. I'm very excited to uh, be a guest on your on your show for the first time. So um, I'm very honored and thank you for asking. Well, welcome and thank you so much for being here. You are probably used to seeing her out on the court. In fact, you, if you've seen some of the Better Pickleball Channel's videos, there are times if I'm talking footwork, I'm pointing at you because your footwork is fantastic. Um, but we're not here to talk about footwork today. <laughs> we're here to talk about something just a little bit different. We are going to talk about the history of pickleball. And I know this has been a labor of love for you. Uh, so tell us about how the history of pickleball, the book came to be. We were in Lake Tahoe, which is your backyard, right, CJ? It is. Yes, and uh, we were there at the resort and it happened to be the first, the very first USAPA ambassador retreat. So there was um, over a hundred of us ambassadors from all over. United States, um, actually out of Costa Rica, came and we met up for three or four days and talked pickleball. And from that very meeting, um, which my mom and I uh, went to, so my mom, Beverly Youngren, uh, we did our six hour car ride back home and thought, you know what, there are so many people there that don't know the history, you know, and how are they supposed to know, right? Because it's like, it's bits and pieces all over the internet and things and that. Uh, so from Lake Tahoe on our car ride home, we thought, you know what? We need to capture all these stories because of course no one's getting any younger and we need to write this book. Jennifer, everyone who's watching may not know how Pickleball started. So why don't we begin there? Hey CJ, that's a great question because many people go, what the heck? How did this all start? Well, my short version is in 1965 on Bainbridge Island, which is right off the coast of Seattle, Washington. Um, there were some families there and they were out in the summer playing games. The kids were bored and this game was created. Um, and there's such great stories of how that all evolved. But basically there was this old badminton court and a bunch of bored kids and some parents are like, you need to find something to do. And together, this sport was created, and they just had fun with it for the summer. Um, and then from there on, it just bloomed slowly and to what it is today. So why don't you tell us what you mean by game changers and what they are? Yes, there are four different game changers that I'd like to share with you guys, because basically in the history of pickleball, there were several times that our sport would have not um, continued growth and probably would have died off. So in 1975, this newspaper article came out um, and it was from the National Observer. And basically the, the guy from New York City came and visited Barney McCallum in Seattle and they took the ferry over to um, the island and he wanted to check out what pickleball was. So it was a quick interview. The next day, the guy flew home and the guy called Barney. He said, "Hey, how much would you? How much would it cost for a starter kit? I want to put this in this newspaper article." And Barney's like, "Well, you know, a couple paddles, a ball, and a and a net. Uh, okay, let's say twenty nine fifty. And the guy said, "Perfect." And then Barney didn't hear from him for weeks, and then a flood of envelopes and orders came from all over the United States of people wanting their pickleball stuff. And that, that news article was huge to continue the growth of pickleball. So another cool thing on this story, on this newspaper article, after all those envelopes came in, all these orders, Barney had to make some paddles. Now, this is a wood paddle. This is several generations later, but he had to crank out 
hundreds of these paddles to make. Um, the original ones, of course, didn't have all this buildup, but again, the evolution of our paddles is a whole nother story that CJ and I will have to talk about. But it's amazing that that summer from that newspaper article, all these orders came in and there was a teenage kid in the backyard had the plywood and he was cutting out paddles all summer long. And another game changer was in the late 70s, uh, trade shows and Title IX. You wonder what the heck they have to do in common? Well, uh, Pickleball Inc., who was the one that was running the, the company and had the balls and paddles, they would go to different trade shows throughout the United States, be it a PE or a sporting good association, big trade shows, and they would go and have their booth and sell their wares and take orders. Well, also in the early 70s, 1972 to be exact, Title IX passed. So that's when the girls or the women in the education and in the schools would get funding for their athletics. So it took a few years for the schools to actually have to implement that, but which made it probably say mid 70s, late 70s. But that was really helpful to our sport pickleball because the orders came in for those wooden paddles and balls, and that really kept us going. And the third game changer in pickleball is when, uh, like in the early 80s, the composite paddle was created. So the picture you see here, the guy in the white shirt, that's Arlen Parento. He's the guy that came up and invented a composite paddle, which means no more wood paddles. And uh, the cool thing about Arlen is he was inducted into the Pickleball Hall of Fame a couple years ago when it first was created. And he has, um, and his son Steve Peronto is still around, but it's really cool that he, he kind of kept this game going and gave us new paddles with new materials. So basically we left the wood paddle, like I showed earlier, this is the lovely swinger from the 70s. And then we went moved into Arlen's paddles, which was the composite paddles. And that was a big game changer for our sport and the players. And the last game changer in our sport. Remember, these are big, big things that happen in the history of our sport. And if they didn't happen, we would not have the fun that we have now with pickleball or even know what pickleball means. So this game changer, I'd like to show this picture. Um, Sid Williams and the USAPA. So what you see here on this picture, the guy in the black shirt is Sid Williams. He's from Tacoma, Washington. And he actually was inducted into the Pickleball Hall of Fame uh, the first time with Arlen Parento. But the neat thing about him is that he really got Pickleball to have tournaments and people involved. And he had a pickle company, or actually Nally's Pickle, be a sponsor of a tournament. So he did all these awesome things like in the early 80s, way before most of us knew that there was even pickleball. And so with Sid Williams, right, he was very involved um, with creating, or I should say he created the USAPA. And you see here on the slide that there's a period in between each. So that's what they had, the United States Amateur Pickleball Association, which he created. He had um, uh, tons of documentation on his minutes and the meetings and the tournaments and the entry fees and the um, entry forms. And uh, after it got rolling in the mid 80s, so just a few years later, he realized that some of these pickleball players were really good and they were not amateurs anymore. So then they changed the A to America, the United States America Pickleball Association, which is what we have today. So Sid Williams, and again, um, in this picture, he's with uh, Joel Pritchard, which is one of our three founders. So together, Sid and Joel are there at one of the tournaments of Sid, that Sid had in Washington, and that really kept our, our sport alive. Jennifer, interestingly enough, there was one thing, and a very substantial thing, this is a biggie, <laughs> that you were not able to document without your research. And I think you have a special request to the Better Pickleball community. True. I have homework 
for your viewers because we need to know exactly where the term kitchen came from. If you have a story or you have real facts, documentation of like, hey CJ, hey Jennifer, the kitchen term was created here and when and where it would be great. Jennifer, if people can help you with that kitchen information or if they'd like a copy of the book, how do they find you? Well, CJ, you just go on to allpickleball.com and you'll find everything you need.